Thanks for making it to Veterans Info Tap. I'm glad you made it. Let's talk about protecting you and your rating for now and the future and what that looks like uh, as you go through your VA journey. There's always these worries out there about, you know, great, I got my rating. Is the VA going to come back now and take it from me? So, in some cases, there's going to be future exams, right? So, if we front load this a little bit, and think about instead of being a reactionary action, reactionary, whatever, instead of being reactive um, to it, let's look, be a little bit proactive first. So that's what I'm going to start with is being proactive to make sure that you protect yourself the best you can as you're going moving forward with your claims process. Then we'll talk about the different provisions that are there for you to protect you uh, uh, with regard to reductions, essentially. So with that, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, share with a friend, all that good stuff. I really appreciate it. Uh, two asks, hit the thumbs up. I guess that's my thumb, not that. Hit the thumbs up and let the video run. Those things help to push this information out to more of us, which is really what the bottom line is, right? So if you want to support the channel, truly, in other ways, you can uh, do that by becoming a member. Go to the homepage. You'll see highlighted members and a join button. Thank you so much to all you members. I truly appreciate your support uh, more than you know. Thank you so much. All right, so let's jump into this. Protecting yourself is essentially getting ratings that are deemed static, okay? Static is a really, really important um, aspect. Um, we actually covered some of this on that co-hosted channel that I have, Veterans Daily, with Clay from the CivDiv. We have our joint channel, uh, Veterans Daily. Please check that out. Uh, we covered this topic pretty good, so uh, please jump in there. So when it comes to static conditions... There's different ways you can get there, right? Sometimes the ailment is sel itself is just static in nature, okay? Uh, why is it important to get static conditions, right? Forget about the fact of reaching 100% permanent and total, which is obviously a goal for, for many, and you have to have static conditions for that. Besides that, it eliminates the future exam. So when you file a claim with the VA and the VA grants you a uh, service connection, they may or may not set a future exam for your condition. So how can you control that at all if you can? Some conditions just are what they are, right? And uh, the VA may say, well, that condition is just already deemed not to ever get better than what it already is. So we're just going to make you static for that condition at that uh, uh, level of severity. Cool. Other conditions like we'll say GERD, for example, or something more serious like cancer, you, don't, you never know, right? GERD could be treated with uh, medications. You might be able to get a little bit of relief. Cancer might go into remission and then you have residuals to work with. So it's, um, it's a, a waning game on the VA side, right? So you might have a future exam for that. Some, some situations, we'll use GERD for an example. If you were diagnosed and um, subsequently filed a claim and then it got decided and then all of that happened within a year and a half, right? My first diagnosis, GERD is one of those things to where, you know, sometimes you just deal with it for, for some time, right? Uh, before you actually... Uh, put in, uh, 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 put in for, or go get a diagnosis and put in a claim. So you don't really have a track record of the severity. So when you put in your, um, when you go, when you go to your doctor and get diagnosed, and then you file your claim and then it gets awarded, well, you might only have a year and a half time frame or something of actually being diagnosed with, uh, you know, GERD. For example, uh, the VA is probably going to set a future exam. However, if you have a 10-year history of being diagnosed and treated for whatever ailment it is, don't just give the VA the last report that you had from your doctor because they're not quite sure, you know, they might not have all the information they need to make you static. Meanwhile, you have a 10-year block of time uh, where you've been being seen for that specific condition that has not gotten any better, right? So we're talking about essentially the five-year rule here. The five-year rule basically says no re-examinations if you have shown that you have been static in nature with your uh, symptoms for that condition. So 
It would be important if you're filing a claim for something that you've been treated for for quite some time to give full context of your condition, okay? Give them the full picture of the severity, how long you've been being treated. Ask your doctor if they'll write you a little letter, even if you don't need a nexus letter, because maybe that nexus is already proven. Get the doctor to write a letter explaining how long you've been being treated for that, uh, how the severity has stayed the same or gotten worse over time, that they deem your condition to be static in nature. Doing those things up front will help the VA to mark your condition down as static instead of putting a future exam, which nobody likes. Nobody likes the future exam. Nobody likes the stress and the anxiety of a, oh my gosh, I got a future exam coming up. Oh my gosh, it's next month. Uh, I'm nervous. I'm used to this money. And now all of a sudden it could go away and you, you freak yourself out. So you can circumvent some of that, not all of it. Just be smart and try to give the VA what they're looking for to do that. Now, as far as protections are concerned overall, um, I'm gonna preface this with, the VA doesn't have like this magical siren that goes off when you meet certain criterias, especially after your um, claim has already been adjudicated and now you're just a veteran receiving a check right? The VA doesn't have some magical system that pops up and goes, hey, veteran so-and-so is now, um, you know, exempt from an exemption. Exempt, not exempt from an exemption. Exempt from an examination. They kind of sound the same. Anyway, so I'm going to just read through here uh, some of the scenarios in which your uh, uh, re-examination would, would, you would not have one. So let's do that. So first of all, um, I'm, I'm in the CFR here. This is the Code of Federal Regulations. I'm going to talk about the scheduling re-examinations. Again, re-examinations could prompt reductions. No examinations are a good thing. So anytime you could not have an examination, a uh, future exam, that's kind of the route you would want. So scheduling re-examinations. Assignment of a pre-stabilization rating requires re-examination within the second six months period following separation from service. Following initial Department of Veterans Affairs examination or any scheduled future or other examination, re-examination, if in order, will be scheduled within not less than two years nor more than five years within the judgment of the rating board unless another time period is elsewhere specified. So what are they saying? Typically, uh, the most likely scenario for us when we file our claims is that if we are going to have a future exam, the VA will state it actually in your decision letter that there will be a future exam. And typically that uh, future exam will be within two to five years from your decision. Moving on, compensation cases, scheduling re-examinations, assignment of pre- uh, Oh, excuse me, that's the one we just did. Next one. No periodic future examinations will be requested in service-connected cases. No periodic re-examination will be scheduled. That's all good. Uh, they got uh, six things here that I'm going to read to you. Six, essentially, bullet points. All right, so the number one. When the disability is established as static no future exams, right? So that is one reason. Now, all these other things basically point to your condition turning to a static nature is essentially what these are all doing. So I love that they lead off with the fact that uh, when your disability is established as, as static, no future exam or re-exam. All right, number two, when the findings and symptoms are shown by examination scheduled in the paragraph B21 of this section or other examination and hospital reports to have persisted without material uh, improvement for a period of five years or more. So what's really interesting here is in that first part, it says when the findings and symptoms are shown by examination scheduled in paragraph B21, which is uh, when the which is the first one we read, which is when the disability is established as static. So get your doctor to say that your condition is static, okay? Uh, especially if you have the five years uh, or more of evidence supporting that. Number three. 
where the disability from disease is permanent in character and of such nature that there is no likelihood of improvement. Number four, in cases of veterans of uh, 55 years of age or older, except under unusual circumstances. Number five, when the rating is prescribed scheduled minimum rating. So in other words, if you're at the minimum rating for that specific condition, there's no future exam because they can't make you lower than the lowest. So there's no reason because what's the reason for the re-exam? Do we need to lower your rating? So uh, if you're at the lowest rating uh, schedule for that uh, specific condition, they're not going to have a future exam. Uh, so like tinnitus, for example, if you're rated 10% for tinnitus, you're not going to have a future exam for tinnitus because it's only rated at 10. All right, moving on. Uh, number six, where a combined disability evaluation would not be affected if the future examination should result in a reduced evaluation for one or more conditions. All they're saying there is that if they moved one condition, it didn't change your overall rating, right? With the VA funny math, that can happen. They can move, you know, if they drop you, uh, drop your rating. For example, I am 100% static on all of these conditions, 100%. I have one condition that had a future exam, but that future exam got nixed because even if that condition got rated at zero, I'd still be 100%. So they don't, so they don't uh, move forward with that. It's a waste of time and resources for them. With that, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. Have a great one. And remember, if we don't take care of each other, something went wrong.